Okay, so last time we saw this, uh, this way of looking at change, which is the equation we always gonna use, which is an plus one equals to an plus delta of an, which is remember here for our purposes, this is the future value equals to the present value plus whatever change happens during the interval of time. Okay, one more example I'm gonna do with that is this one here. So this is example about the mortgage of a home. Okay, so, so let, me, let me read. So six years ago, your parents purchased a home by financing $160,000 for 30 years, paying monthly payments of 1,219 with a monthly interest of 0.7%. Um, so that's very standard, the interest is monthly, something like that actually is kind, kind of cheap. Uh, they have made 72 payments and wish to know how much money they owe on the mortgage, which they're considering paying off with that inheritance they receive. So what we need to do here is with all this information that is up here, uh, they already made 72 payments, so we want to know how much money they still owe on the, on the house. Okay, so let me, before we start doing anything, uh, anything about that, let me ask you some questions about the mortgage of a home. <laughs> of a home. Now, when you hear this, what comes to your mind? What goes, what should go here in mortgage of a home? So this is the private mortgage insurance. And what this is, if your down payment is less than 20% of the value of the house, you have to pay an extra interest. So for example, if you have a house that costs let's say $200,000 and you pay 5% down payment, then you have to pay an extra interest on that. Um, so some of the people who you borrow money from, they might not tell you this, but they're gonna add this if you don't have that 20% that down on your house, okay? All right, so how are we gonna solve this problem here? We're gonna simplify this and we're gonna and we're not we're not gonna take into consideration the closing fees, the insurance, the PMI if there is any, or any initial cost or anything that you have to do with the house. Like you have to maybe get it. Uh, uh, you have to check if the house is uh, doing well. All all of that, all those checking that you have to do at the beginning. So we're just gonna simply do this. Why? Because we are simplifying the problem. Remember at the beginning of the class, we mentioned that when we look at a problem, but first we're gonna approach it, uh, making some assumptions to make things easier. Now, if you take all of this into consideration, then, then the problem is gonna be more complicated and we probably need to have more information more than this. But at this point, we're gonna solve the problem just the way it's stated here. So we're just gonna look at the monthly uh, payment in the interest in that. So, so that's how we're gonna go about that problem. All right, so let, before we go into the, how to solve the problem, so let me draw a picture here using our sequence, the sequence that we always use. So let me draw the picture. So we start here at A0, which is gonna be our initial value. Uh, but before that, before that, let's write down what AN should be. Now, the problem is talking about, let me go back here. The problem is talking about how much we own. So it would be nice if we call this AN, the amount of money that we owe or the, your parents owe at the end of the nth month of the nth month, 
All right, so I'm gonna erase this here. So let's do this to the picture here of, of what we have. So that would be for us a n. So let's look at the at the picture. So let's look like the timeline. So this is gonna be a zero, a one. So for us a zero because uh, in this case uh, the amount of money that we are borrowing is uh, this hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars. That will be the a zero for us. So this will be. $160,000 and a one here will be what we owe at the end of the first month. So this period of time that is between a zero and, and a one is, this is the first, the first month and so on. So like we have a two and in general, we're going to have here a n and a n plus one. Now, one. What if we are looking in general at a month? What month is this one? Is is this the nth month, or is this the n plus one month? This is the n plus one month. So that would be the n plus one month there. Okay. So let's set up again our start to set up our difference equation here. So as always, we want uh, a n plus one equals to a n plus the delta of a n. And the idea most of the time is we want to look at what this delta of a n is in terms of the value of a n. And remember this here is gonna be the change that happens. This is the change that happens in this n plus one month that is here. So let's look at the formula for, for that. So let's look at the formula. So that what will be the delta of a n. Now this is going to be similar to the problem we did last time about the savings certificates when you have some interest and you take money out. Okay, so let me ask you this question. What, what is the change that happens in this month in the n plus one month? Exactly. And to this interest is added and the payment is made. So we're going to have some interest. And then the payment uh, that we make here. Now for this payment, should I put here in the middle, should I put addition or subtraction? All right. So this is going to be the interest that we are paying and the interest that we are paying is the interest that corresponds to this month. So that would be the interest over the amount of money that we owe so far, which is will be this AN that is right here. So that will be whatever amount of uh, interest we are doing here, which in this case, according to the problem is 0.7%. So this is gonna be, the interest is gonna be 0.7% of the value of a n, which is the uh, the starting what we owe at the beginning of that month, minus the payment, which is one thousand two hundred and nineteen, and that's the payment we are making. Okay. So as we did with the previous example, uh, so we just take the 0.7 percent of this a n, and that is the same as multiplying by zero point zero zero seven of a n and then the minus one thousand two hundred and nineteen so that's gonna give us the expression for delta of a n in terms of a n so then let's go back again to the to our original uh, way of to set up things so a n plus one is equal to a n plus the change, which is delta of a n. And we already know that this change is just right here, which is that formula. So we just have to replace it there to be able to find the, the recurrence formula. So it's a n plus one equals to a n plus 0 0.007 a n minus the 1,000 
219 that we have there. And we just have to simplify now, look at the common terms here. So I have a one times the an. So this is gonna give us an plus one equals to 1.007 of an minus 1219. And this will be our recurrence formula here. So com to complete the difference equation, let's look at the initial value here. So 160,000, so that will be, so this will be here our, our difference equation for, for, this, for what we have so far. Now we are almost actually done with the problem because let's go back again with the statement, statement says. So let me scroll all the way up here. So they have made 72 payments and wish to know how much money they owe on that, on that loan. So basically what we wanna do is let's look at what happens after 72 payments, okay? Now, if you were to do this by hand, you can do it by hand but it's still gonna take a very long time. Now, let me do a couple of them so you know how to do this by hand with, without using Mathematica. So let's say you wanna compute the value of what, what you owe um, in the second month, which is this one. So for that, what you're gonna do is you're gonna use the recurrence formula that is right here. So that's the one you're gonna use. So A1, it will give you 1.007 of what A? A0 minus 1,219. Now this A0 that is here, uh, this part is 160,000. So if we just plug it here, we will be able to know what is the value of, of A1. Now, if you do all that computation, let's say using your calculator, you're gonna get 159,901. So that will be what you will at the end of uh, the second month, at the beginning of the second month. Okay, um, and so how will you do A2 then? Let's go a little bit further, just one more before we look at Mathematica. So what will be A2 if you were to compute this manually? Can somebody tell me what this is gonna be in terms of the formula? And now this is again, so the A1 is here. We already know that one from the one before. So it's a recurrence formula because it's calling itself many times, right? Um, okay, so of course we're not gonna do this by hand because it's gonna be at to this, how much was it here? The 72 payment. So we're gonna use Mathematica for that. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you the Mathematica code that I have here. Okay, okay so the same thing we did the last class. So it's again, the recurrence formula, the recurrence table that we have here. Inside here, I have the recurrence formula, which is an plus one equals to 1.007 an minus 12.19. The initial value is 160, our sequence is A, and let's say we're gonna go from zero to 72. And so the last value is the one that we're looking for, this one, one here, 100, 150,773, okay? Now there's another way you can do this in Mathematica. Like you see, in this particular problem, I'm only interested in the last value. I don't actually need to see all of this data that is here. Now we can do that in Mathematica by using exactly the same, the same code, but there is only one difference here. So instead of saying from zero to 72, we're gonna say just between curly braces, just 72. And if we press enter there, we're gonna get just the value that you're looking for. So, so let's try to, so let's put this in the, the as an answer. So, so let's put this as an answer here. So after, let me change into 
this one. So after uh, 72 payments, which is about six years, uh, your parents uh, uh, how much do they owe? They, the parents still uh, oh, uh, what was the the number? Can somebody tell me? One hundred fifty thousand seven hundred seventy-three. Correct. Okay, so I just want to point out this uh, beyond what the problem says is. So look at this. After six years, how much they actually have paid over those six years of the house. The house initially is 100, so the, the loan that they took was initially $160,000. They only pay a little bit less than 10,000. So, so they have only pay pay uh, if you make the difference, it will be $9,227 out of the 100, out of the $160,000 that they owe. I mean, I'm not exaggerating here. This 0.7% is not at that high interest. So this just to show you how much money the bank is taking from you or whoever is lending you the money. Here they already pay, as you mentioned, they already paid uh, to the bank or, or whoever of whoever lent them the money. Uh, that was 72 payments uh, multiplied by 1219, which you made it correctly, that's like 87, like almost $90,000, so 87768 uh, so, so, so it's a good business to lend money, basically. All right. So, so this part, so this is the section 1.1. So I just finished the section 1.1 with this example. Uh, I'm going to move into section 1.3. So the section, the section 1.3 is solutions to dynamical systems. To dynamical systems. Um, so, um, so I'm gonna say this again. So the reason I'm skipping 1.2 is because 1.2 is, is the same idea, is the same kind of formula we are using. So we are using a a uh, difference equation, but it's approximation. So I'm gonna do this one first because this is a way to solve things exactly. So I'm gonna first give you the solutions of things exactly, and then we'll go to, to, to examples where we have to do some approximations. So what is the solution to a dynamical system or a difference equation? So what we want to do is, is we want to find a formula, find a close, a close solution to a dynamical system. Uh, and what do I mean by close? So what that means is that we don't want to use recurrence formulas. So we don't want recurrence recurrence formulas. Uh, the reason we don't want recurrence formulas is because uh, unless, of course, you use a mathematical for this is that you always have to rely on the previous uh, computations to get to the next one. So when you have a recurrence formula, uh, the disadvantage is that you need to rely on the previous computations to get to the next one. When you have a closed formula, you don't have to do that. You don't need 
you don't need to know the previous computations. Uh, and to do that, we're going to use this theorem here that is going to tell us, uh, I'm going to call this theorem number one. And the theorem is, is, is this one. So it's basically the solution of some dynamical system. So the solution of the linear dynamical system Uh, this is a linear dynamical system because there's no, everything is, the recurrence formula is linear. So it's going to be like this, a n plus one is equal to r, where r here is going to be a constant times a n. So in this case, this r that is here is non-zero constant. Now, the reason that I'm, we are asking uh, for non-zero is because if it is zero, if this is zero, then pretty much all the terms of the sequence are going to be zeros. Uh, and then a zero is going to be some constant. A zero is going to be some constant. So what we have here is, this is, as this here is a special case of a linear recurrence formula where a n plus one is just a constant times a n. There's no other constant here. And a zero, of course, is a constant. That's the, that's the initial condition. So if that is what you have, then is the solution, which is, means the closed formula is going to be this. The nth term of that sequence is actually equal to r to the n times the initial condition. So what that is saying is this, the sequence that you get from this dynamical system or this linear uh, recurrence formula that we have here, that solution is exactly the same as this one. So you hear in, the, in this one that I'm highlighting, that's not a recurrence formula. That's what we call a closed formula. So it does not depend on the previous one. It only depends on R0 and the value of N. All right, so let me go back to the example we did at the beginning of the last lecture. So the example, so let, let me just recall that. So the example we had, so first example in the class. So if you remember that that was from the saving certificate. So we had the, the savings Certificate. This is the one that we didn't withdraw money. This is the one that we had. Uh, so the the initial initial amount was uh, ten thousand, and the interest was at uh, at one percent there. So that's the one, the, the, the very first example we did in, in, the, in, the, in the lecture last time. And so there were no deposits, there were not withdrawals, you just leave the money there. And if you remember from that example, uh, the difference equation in that example, the difference equation was this one. Um, it was a n plus one equals to 1.01 a n and a zero uh, is equal to 10,000. Okay. Now I, I, I went faster here because it, we did this example last time. Okay. okay so if you look at this, uh, at this system that we have here, that's exactly the system of the theorem. So I have, a n plus one equals to a constant r. And in this case, the constant r is 1.01 a n. And then a zero is just the constant, the initial value of that system, which is 10,000. So what we can say here is from that theorem. So, so let me just indicate this more. This one here, 
1.01, that's the value of R. So, so let's say this from the theorem. So from the theorem, we know that a n, uh, let me scroll up here a little bit. So from the theorem, we know that a n is equal to r, what r in this case is 1.01, .01, to the n times uh, the value of a zero, which in our case is $10,000. So multiply by $10,000, okay? Or if you wanna write it down a little bit better, I'm gonna put the $10,000 up front. So $10,000 that multiplies 1.01 to the n. And so this is gonna give us, it's exactly the same sequence. It's just that this one here right now is the closed formula, okay? Now, so the, let, me, let me just put here closed formula. So that's what we call the closed formula. Now, what is the advantage of this closed formula? The advantage of this closed formula is that, for example, if I want to know what is A of 100, I just have to plug in here the N for 100. So it's gonna give me 10,000. That multiplies 1.01 .01 to the 100, and I just compute that and I will get, and I will get the value of A of 100. Now, if you do that with the recurrence formula, just ignore all of that and just do it with this, if you want the value of A 100, you need to compute the value of A 99, A 98, and so on. Now, if you use Mathematica, Mathematica is gonna do the same thing. If you just, let me come here. If you put this in Mathematica, Mathematica, what it's doing is, well, let's just compute the recurrence formula and goes to all that. It does, it does it very quickly, but it's still using the recurrence formula. The, the advantage of the closed formula is I don't have to know all the previous computations to be able to know what is the value of any particular a n. Okay. All right, so we're gonna move into another example. Uh, and so we're gonna, whenever we can, we're gonna make use of of this theorem because then we don't have to do this with the recurrence formula. All right, now let me move into the next example. Okay, so, so let, me, let me read this one. So this is the sewage treatment. So what we have here is, let me read it. So a sewage treatment plan processes raw sewage to produce usable fertilizer and clean water by removing other contaminants. The process is such that each hour, 12% of the remaining contaminants in a processing tank are removed. So every hour, 12% of the contaminant is being removed from, from that plant. So there are several questions here. So the first one is this. What percentage of the sewage will remain after one day? So we need to answer that question. Second question is, how long will it take to lower the amount of sewage by half? So the contaminant by half. That'll be the second question. And the third question will be, how long until the level of sewage is down to 10% of the original level? So let's look at the solution then. So um, before I go into the solution, uh, I want to point out something here in the in the statement, and there's nowhere in this statement they are telling us how what is the initial amount or eight zero in this case. So when that is not given, just treat a zero as a constant. So a zero for us here will be the initial amount. So this will be the initial amount of the contaminant in the tank. So that will be a zero. We don't know what that is, but we'll let that, 
will certainly be a constant. And so let's give a name for a n. So what is a n? So a n will be the the amount of contaminant. Uh, in the tank after after n hours so that will be the contaminant after n hours now whenever you are doing this type of problems always choose correctly what your a n should be because that's going to make a difference uh, when you're trying to solve these problems choosing a n correctly what the correct meaning for a n is is important here. All right, so so let's let me try to to um, draw a picture first. So be, before we actually go into set it up, setting up the the recurrence formula for for this problem. Okay, so so let me draw a picture here. So so you're gonna start here at a zero which we don't know what it is. And in the first hour, so according to the problem, the contaminant is going to reduce and it's going to reduce uh, up to the A1, right? So that will be in the first hour. So when you are here in the general case, uh, this is the AN and this is going to be the AN plus one. So this will be the general case this will be the n plus one hour. Uh, that will be uh, just the picture that we have here. So this is the initial amount of contaminant after the first hour will be A1. And this is on the during the n plus one hour, initial amount of contaminant is An, and it's gonna end up in An plus one. All right, so, so let's look at, at the equation here. So I'm gonna write down this in English. So contaminant, the contaminant in the N plus one hour is gonna be equal because I wanna set up this as an AN, which I remember is the future here. As, as a recurrence formula. Let me go back and read, let's read the problem again. So what is happening in the problem here? So let me read this sentence here. So the process is such that each hour, 12% of the con remaining of the contaminants in the processing tank are removed. So every hour, whatever is left of the contaminant at the beginning of that hour, 12% is being taken away by that tank. So the contaminant in the N plus one hour, which is this part, will be equal to whatever the contaminant we started with minus 12% of this one, of this one again, because we are taking out 12% of whatever we started with in that hour. Okay, so this is gonna be the contaminant And because we are looking at this, uh, at this A end right here is the contaminant in the nth hour. In the eighth hour minus, then we are reducing in this hour 12% of, of course, the initial contaminant, which is this one here. So that's gonna be minus 12% uh, the contaminant in the nth hour. All right. All right, so what is this one right here? This is a n plus one, right? The contaminant at the end of that hour. So then this is gonna be a n plus one. Let's give it a second there to update. And that's equal to the contaminant at the end of that N hour, which is A N. So it's gonna be A N minus, and that's gonna be minus 
the this uh, this one here, this twelve percent of the contaminant there at the end of that hour. So it's going to be minus twelve percent of that. Um, so that would be twelve percent of a n, which is going to be zero point twelve a n. So let's simplify things out here. So the a n plus one uh, is going to be equal. So just do the, the subtraction here, right? So one minus 0 0.12 is going to be 0 0.88 of a n, right? And so, and so we we will have uh, the the dynamical system or the difference equation if we knew what A0 is, but A0 is just a constant here. Now you're gonna see uh, that we will need that value of A0 to answer the questions we are, we're trying to answer. Okay, so this would be our, our dynamical system or difference equation. Okay, now here, because we already have a theorem that tell us what this is, now this one here is exactly the, the theorem we had at the beginning of, of the class. Let me go back here to, to this one. So right here, we have a n plus one equals to a constant, which in this case is, in our case is 0 0.88, and a zero is a constant. So if I go back here, I have that theorem. In this case, then this, constant that is here, 0.88 is our R. So let's write down by the theorem. What is then A N? Our closed formula for this, for this example. So that's the closed formula. All right. So what do we need to answer here? So, so now we have the closed formula, so that means it's gonna be a little bit easier to solve things. It's not a recurrence formula. Let me scroll all the way up here to go back and see what questions we have. So our first question is this one. So what percentage of the sewage will remain after one day? Now remember the, this AN that is here is measured in hours. So what we really want here is we need a, a of of 24. So a of 24, uh, which is basically just a plug it right here. No need for recurrence formulas. It's gonna be 0 0.88 to the 24 power times a zero. And so in this case, well, you probably have to use the calculator for that or, or Mathematica. And this is gonna give you approximately uh, 0 0.05 of a zero. Now let's make an interpretation of what this actually means. So after 24 hours, we have 0, 0.0 of the initial amount. So what is remaining of that contaminant after 24 hours? in terms of the percentage. After 24 hours, uh, only 5% of the initial contaminant uh, remains. Okay, so that will answer the first question. So this here, was question one. So this was question one. Okay. Okay. Let's go to the second question. So the second question is how long will it take to lower the amount of sewages by half? So they're asking me here for time. So for the second question, let me put this down here. So for the second question, this will be question two. Question two, this is asking for time. Time. 
Now, because they're asking for time here, so what we're doing is we, we want to have N, right? We don't want A N because that's the amount of, soot, of contaminant left. What we want is N here, the time. So we want time, which in this case we are measuring by N. So we need to find, so we need to find N because in this case N for us represents time. Uh, such that a n as a fraction here, so it's going to be one half of a zero. Now this is an equation that we need to solve for n. Okay. Now n here cannot be in terms of a zero. We are looking for a specific time. So even though we don't know a zero, because uh, we have a closed formula, we'll be able to solve this exactly. Now let's go back to a closed formula for a n. Let me scroll up here. This is the formula for a n. So a n here can be replaced by this right hand side. And that's exactly what we're going to do for this part. So we're going to I'll do that here. So that's going to give us uh, 0 0.88 to the n a0 equals to one half of a0. Okay. okay. Questions about that? Any questions? Remember, we are looking for n here. Right, so we're looking for it. Okay, so this is the part where I'm gonna ask you to work on your own a little bit. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes. Uh, please work on solving this equation for n. So do it on, on your own and I will, I will check with you a couple of minutes later, okay? So work, work on solving this for n. We take a uh, log of that uh, to the n equal to ln of 0.5. And then this n that is here comes down as a multiplication. So it's n ln of 0 0.88 uh, equals to ln of 0.5. So n here would be equal to ln of 0.5, and this is all divided by ln of 0.88, is that number here. So an approximation of this. Okay, so now we get this, this is 5.42. 5 so let's answer the question. So the ATX 5.42 hours to lower the contaminant by half of the original. Now you see in this uh, in this in this example we didn't need a zero because anyway a zero is going to cancel here anyways. So that, that's why we could solve the problem. Also, one more thing I want to mention here, if we didn't have the closed formula for an, then this problem would be a lot more difficult, okay? So the, having the closed formula uh, give us an easier way to solve this problem. All right, let's look at the third uh, question. So the, qu the third question is how long would it take to Oh, this is the second one, this one. How long until the level of sewage is down to 10% of the original level? This is actually very similar to question number two. Uh, let's, let's see why. So this is gonna be question three. So question three. So we still need to find time here. So we need to find time, find time. And in this case, for us, time is our variable n. 
So we need to know what is the time. So that is 10% left of the contaminant. So what would be the equation here? A N Right, so we're gonna do something similar here. All right, so this is similar to what we did the other one. So again, I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes and please solve this for N and then we'll compare the answers. Solve for, for N. So that is ours. So let's answer the question. So it takes it takes 18.01 hours for the contaminant to reduce to 10%, oops, 10% uh, of the original. Initial amount. Okay, guys, I'll see you then next week.